Right now it is time for This Week in the Lakeville Journal. Uh, we we're joined by the J&J Club, <laughs> Janet and John, uh, from the Lakeville Journal. And I'm sure they're uh, excited and well in the middle right now of their celebration. We say good morning to Janet and to John. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, well, uh, you're... The celebration has begun. Uh, 125 years, opened up with a reception for the art show, then had that marvelous street fair. Uh, you now have, of course, uh, which started last night, uh, the movie house joining in with the first of their four movies. Uh, and, but you still have a couple of other events coming up on top of that. We certainly do. And I have to say, it's just been so much fun so far. It's been so much planning and, well, gee whiz, uh, 125 <laughs> years of work leading up to it. But, you know, not for us. But anyway, um, yeah, just fantastic so far. That street fair was so much fun. Please, everyone, come and see the exhibit at the Academy Building at the Salisbury Association on Main Street in Salisbury. It tells you the whole history of the paper. Last night it was all the president's men. And at the movie house in Millerton, and it was just a great crowd and really uh, so interesting to see that movie again after uh, years uh, for many of the people in the audience, including myself. So um, going onward, there are three more movies to come at the movie house. Um, that's uh, His Girl Friday, The Killing Fields, and Citizen Kane, and on Sunday... The Sharon Playhouse will have the Patio Cabaret at 3 p.m. That's this Sunday, the 21st. And, of course, we have the Salisbury Forum, um, which will just be a great discussion of the future of local journalism and journalism in general. And the uh, gala on uh, the Newsprint Jubilee, the gala on September 17th, that anyone is welcome to come to, go to lakevillejournalfoundation.org to purchase tickets. Uh, and I've gone to that website it did a terrific job uh, in, in, in putting that website up. It's nice, right? It's uh, very uh, user-friendly, very attractive, no, so we're proud of that. That's yeah, the we're thing in the process used. of doing our news site to uh, um, come up to that level, too. We'll see. I don't. I, I don't think people realize how, how difficult it is to put together a really comprehensive, easy-to-use, and good-looking website. Uh, but uh, I went to the, I went to the site and uh, it really is a great site. So uh, I look forward to you uh, uh, upgrading uh, in the future uh, on your uh, on your regular site, which, by the way, is very easy to use as well. Uh, oh, going to tricornernews.com. And you know it has a lot more uh, content on it than most websites. Our site, because of course we uh, update it every week with lots of news. So it it is uh, complicated to uh, look at different designs, and uh, we are looking forward to that, though. Thanks for that, Marshall. All for right. using the site, everybody should use it, tricornernews.com. Absolutely. Right. And, just... you know, if I could just give a shout-out to uh, the, you know, approximately 20 nonprofit organizations that were taking part in participating in our street fair. Uh, there was a tent full of them, and uh, it was a chance for <clears throat> the public to sort of learn more about each one and and sometimes they they operate kind of in the in the background but they do tremendous things and it was really a good opportunity for anyone to come up and walk and talk to somebody from one of these 20 nonprofits. All right, we will move on to the front page of uh, the Lakeville Journal of course. Uh, people can see the stories about the 125 year celebration, pictures and stuff all throughout the paper. But uh, you also have uh, a couple of uh, stories. First of all, uh, the GOP put up uh, their gave their nod uh, for Senate, and it goes to uh, Levy, who's going to run. Yes, Levy is um, one, one handily um, Leo, Leora Levy uh, for U.S. Senate. She will uh, uh, she defeated uh, House Minority Leader Themis Claridis and Peter Lumage. And I believe the next step will be, you know, she's going to go up against uh, Rick Dick Blumenthal in, in the November general election. Uh, voter turnout was about 20 percent. I don't know where that stands. I'm not familiar enough with how Republican primaries uh, fall out here, but 20 percent was where we were at. All right. Democrats uh, turned out a little less, 14 percent. Yeah, yeah I, th I think that's a 
that's probably a, no, a normal a normal thing. And it'll maybe uh, when you go into a, a full slate election year, uh, you know that's that, that's just just not as small as this. It's a little larger. But uh, turn turn out in the primaries is, is traditionally right around I'll say fifteen to twenty percent. Um, got a story there on uh, the annual Sharon Triathlon. Uh, once again, uh, they had a few less people, but it's still an amazing thing to see these people uh, run, bike, and, and and do what they do. Right. It is a uh, it is an annual event that is uh, really a, not only an athletic event but a family event, and uh, it, it involves swimming, biking, and running. Uh, we had a couple of, uh, you know, winners there, of course, and uh, there was a, a, uh, it was a beautiful day for it. Uh, so it was just one of those uh, great, great Sunday afternoon, I guess it was on Saturday afternoon uh, events. All right, and uh, an important story uh, that you uh, are running from the Connecticut, a report from the Connecticut Mirror about insurers being grilled on the rate hikes that people are seeing. Yes, we chose to run this because it affects so many of our own uh, employers here in the northwest corner. Um, insurers this year are, on average, asking for about a 20.4% increase, which is substantially higher than what they saw last year. So the state insurance department held a hearing on, on Monday uh, and uh, let people talk about what they thought uh, the next step will be will be for actuaries on, on the state's insurance uh, department to figure out what really makes sense and what's fair, come back with a response. Um, and I think we will find out in either late August or early September whether or not uh, these rate hikes will hold or whether they'll be chopped or see. All right. Uh, as we as we move on, nice uh, little picture there. Uh, the Salisbury Visiting Nurses Association gave out scholarships. That's a big deal. Uh, those are those are great scholarships that were uh, ten thousand dollars per year for up for up to five years for students seeking uh, careers in medicine or in nursing, uh, whether it be a family pra- family nurse practitioner or health science or even uh, physical therapy or exercise therapy, medical imaging, but that's a, cons- a substantial amount of uh, contribution by the Salisbury Visiting Nurse Association. Five students received these scholarships. All right, and uh, uh, w- this weekend, uh, a nice fundraiser, which is a fun fundraiser uh, for the DM Hunt Library on Sunday. Yes, uh, that's going to be, uh, you know, it, it would... Coming up on Sunday, it'll be outdoors on the lawn. There'll be food, beer, uh, pretzels, music, you know, lemonade, everything. So uh, I guess everybody's looking forward to that. It's supposed to be nice weather. Uh, we'll move on to uh, a, a story by Lila Hawkins, partnering to build regional pollinator pathway. Yes, this story... Uh, has been we are we are sort of out front a little bit on this story because it is the beginning and planning stages uh, in, a, in a partnership between really three groups: the National Park Service, uh, the Upper Hesitonic Valley National Heritage Area, which runs basically from north of Pittsfield to Warren, and Rotary District 7890. So Rotary. Uh, you know, has recognized the, the critical need to take care of really thousands of species of bees and other insects that are, uh, that are suffering from uh, lack of pollination abilities. And so the, they've signed up, and, and 56 Rotary Clubs will be promoting this. Um, and it, it extends, as I said, all the way from uh, north of Pittsfield through our region and uh, there's a separate companion pathway um, that will reach between the Hudson and the Housatonic. Now, you have a picture in the paper. And uh, last week I received uh, a couple of calls uh, the day before this happened asking me if I could do something about the taking down of a tree. And I called and I spoke to why they were taking down the tree. 
and uh, it seemed it seemed reasonable to me. Uh, when that tree came down, I'm talking about the beautiful Dutch elm uh, in front of the town hall. It's about 300 years old. Uh, it had to come down. And when they took it down uh, and laid the chunks on its side, you could see uh, huge sections of the tree were rotted actual hollow inside. So it would have only been a matter of a very short time before that tree came down. Uh, but that's, right. it still is a big story. Yes, and it was uh, the, the tree warden. Uh, we interviewed the tree warden in Sharon about this, and uh, it, it, is one of, it was one of nine uh, Dutch elms located on the green, but because of storms and Dutch elm disease and other things, um, this, the town is now down to three. So we have a Leela Hawken, our reporter in Sharon, took a great shot of the tree right in front of town hall. If you would look at old pictures of the Sharon Town Green, uh, when all the trees were there, absolutely, it was stunning. It was amazing. And yes, it's sad to see the tree go, but like I said, once you saw what it looked like on the inside, it's such a big tree, and had it fallen in the direction of houses and the town hall, it would have created immense amount of damage. So um, it's sad, but it had to come down. Um, another great event that happened in our area, and uh it's funny, when I publicized it, somebody called me and said, oh, that happened uh, last week when they had this singer. I said, no, 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 no. Uh, the Taste of Cornwall went on, and you've got a great story uh, on the Taste of Cornwall, the music and the food and, 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 and how they did that. Yes, uh, you're, you're probably referencing Wanda Houston, Houston at uh, Noble Horizon. Well, um, yeah, yeah, and also she was in cor- uh, she's been all over the corner this this year, and this was just a great event put on by uh, by by Cornwall. I mean, and the merchants all chipped in as well. Yes, it was an, an inaugural event, and uh, everybody loved it. The food was from local farms: Hurlbert's Farm, Beef Brisket, uh, Susie's Bakery, Gaff and Clover Creamery. Uh, people uh, ate, and uh, even some of them danced was uh, the first one, and the, uh, I guess the, they wanted to bring some summer fun to Cornwall, and I guess they did. All right, and you've got a story of the North Canaan Planning and Zoning. Uh, it was busy. They gave approval of the major thing to an uh, office renovation at Mountainside, which actually uh, came about because of the pandemic, and uh, and and immediately the Planning and Zoning Commission moved to, to let that allow uh, and go through quickly. Yes, they had a public hearing because the uh, Mountainside lost three offices. Well, they were changed over during the pandemic to, to accommodate teleconferencing. So they are now going to, without expanding their footprint on the lot, they're going to create three new offices to regain the space that they had lost. Uh, they also, the town selectmen also, uh, gave an endorsement to the housing plan, uh, which really is an as- affordable housing plan, saying that it did comport with the plan of conservation and development. So that mm-hmm. continues to move forward up there. And uh, and, and a great story about uh, dealing with bl- with uh, black bears from the uh, Department of Environmental Protection in Cornwall. Yes, it seems like uh, it seems like uh, many many people. Uh, continue to be obsessed with what's happening with bears in our in our in our midst, and uh, so the the Cornwall uh, uh, Association partnered with Deep and uh, had a public awareness session and talked about you know there were almost 300 people on Zoom, which is a very large number, uh, but they were all listening to Deep advice on best practices living alongside bears. Uh, well, you see it in pictures on on social media and all. The bears are everywhere, and uh, we we took over their territory, and they're reclaiming some of it back. It's just uh, the balance of nature. Uh, and so, there's also there's also a reference in the story to um, there's a there's a bear themed community art project in Cornwall, which is for the benefit of the Cornwall Food and Fuel Fund. Uh, so people can buy those bears. If you drive around, you'll see them. They're, they're cutouts of bears, very colorfully painted. All right. Uh, in the obituary section, 
uh, Ronald Martin's uh, Solon uh, obituary, but also uh, Richie Crane, uh, who was just uh, noted for the business that he and his family <coughs> run in North Canaan, uh, passed away as well. Yes, uh, two big losses here. Uh, the, uh, the Richard Crane is somebody I knew personally uh, because I, as a farm, having a little bit of a farm, I have to have some equipment. I get it up at Crane Equipment, and uh, he's helped me many times. Um, Ron Solon, you know, was also somebody who's definitely going to be missed. Um, two, big, two big names. Uh, uh, looking uh, down below, um, uh, once again, uh, Kent has a forum coming up on the 31st on online security. Yes, they have. Uh, it's, it's being sponsored by the library, Kent Memorial Library, and uh, Michael Jay is a certified Apple teacher and owner of personal tech support. He's going to talk about phishing, um, everyday issues, uh, common sense measures, uh, and, and how to avoid scams. Uh, it seems like they never go away. No. <laughs> no, they multiply, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, we'll go on to <clears throat> the opinion pages now. Johnny, your editorial, Collected Moments in Newspapers or History. That's right. Uh, this week, like last week, we have a combination of editorials from uh, this one's from Cynthia Hoxwender, who's now our Compass and Special Sections editor, but of course was executive editor on the news side for more than 20 years, and uh, tell, tells us how she sees the place of the Lakeville Journal in our communities. And John Costin, uh, my partner here on the radio, talks about service to community now and future. Uh, and I talk about gratitude for uh, the past weekend and all the celebrations that so many are helping us take part in. Um, so please do join us as as we move forward with them, and thank you for all the uh, uh, involvement from everyone in the community, including those nonprofits John mentioned, and they are listed um, in the paper this week, so don't miss that. We have loads of letters this week of all different topics, um, so do give those a read and uh, send us a letter. Uh, yeah, and... Uh... We, we, I would be remiss if we didn't mention uh, the Northwest Connecticut Little League team uh, uh, won a tourney over, over the past week. Absolutely. Uh, this is called the Lindquist Tournament, and it's the uh, all-star team up here from the, from the Northwest uh, called the Northwest Connecticut Steve Blass Little League U-12 All-Stars. Uh, came right into the postseason with uh, a good record and uh, – Ended up, uh, you know, with a 6-0 record, and then and then uh, went went up against uh, teams from Simsbury, Berlin, uh, New Hartford, and uh, they actually the New Hartford team was also undefeated, and uh, they ended up uh, nine to one uh, clinching the championship. So we have a, a very nice photo of the entire team with the coaches uh, on on page B5 of the paper. Uh, uh, we're speaking, of course, uh, with uh, the Lakeville Journal, this week in the Lakeville Journal. Uh, we can now go to the compass section because week by week, uh, getting stronger and stronger because we're doing more and more more things uh, uh, in our area. That's right. Uh, this week, don't miss the Tri-Corner Calendar in Compass, which has many events under all the uh, interests that you have, and of course, there's more online at tricornernews.com. Uh, choices of things to do um, in in the compass. Cynthia Hoxwender writes about finding her way back to the kitchen and what to make out of the garden. Her recipe this week is zucchini fritters, and I bet there are plenty of listeners who have zucchini they'd like to do something with that will taste really good. And this is it. Um, she makes it with a tomato and bacon jam. How can that be bad? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, there is a who done it happening, a uh, murder on the Oriental Rug in Claverack, New York, August 20th um, at the uh, uh, Foundation Gallery. And give that a read. And if it's of interest, it looks like fun, do, do it. Uh, Danielle 
Mailer and Annie Jenkins have a show at the Dam Hunt Library in Falls Village, and there's a beautiful photo of one of uh, Danielle Mailer's paintings, which are so unique and immediately recognizable. Her style is so uh, uplifting. And Lance Christensen writes about cool cars, the well, rarest of the rare, a Peugeot 145S. And he has uh, great photos, as he always would, and talked about what's so special about that vehicle. We have Cynthia writing about um, Ghost of a Dream, a new show at the Geary on Main Street in Millerton. Uh, go over and take a look. It really uh, a dreamy, uh, surreal-looking paintings. Uh, don't miss them. And writers read their work at the DM Hunt Library. Uh, that is coming up, and uh, don't miss that. We have also the Joint Chiefs performing at the Egremont Barn. This is a new venture for them, so if you are fans of the Joint Chiefs, and I know there are many in this listening area, do um, look them up. They will be there on Saturday, August 27th. All right. And, you know, one thing we point out, uh, Janet, looking at your 125th uh, anniversary birthday of the Lakeford Journal, uh, people who work in media, such as yourself, and I'll include people that work here and, and other media outlets, we are stewards. We, you know, our, our, our organizations, the businesses, are, are long time, and we only get to be with them and, and run them for a period of time when other people run them. And that's, that shows how truly valuable something is in a community when, when, you, when you know that ownership and now ownership isn't going to change because the Lakeville Journal has become a non-for-profit. But the people who work and run at it truly are soldiers in the fight for information. And they change uh, maybe on a decade by decade, decade basis. Uh, and that's how important uh, uh, media is in our area. Well, that's right, and uh, that certainly was our goal, looking at um, the longevity of the Lakeville Journal and how to have it survive moving forward um, in a very difficult climate for small media. Um, that's how we decided to try to go nonprofit, and this is our approach to being sure something will be here for that next generation, and we look forward to that. All right. Well, I uh, appreciate what you guys are doing. We look forward to the next movie uh, series. We look forward uh, to uh, the Salisbury Forum and, of course, the Jubilee at the end. Uh, thanks for joining us again this week. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. All right. Uh, that is This Week in the Lakeville Journal. Uh, of course, you can find the Lakeville Journal at tricornernews.com. That's tricornernews.com. Right here at Robin Hood Radio on our on-demand page, robinhoodradio.com. Click on On Demand and click on uh, This Week in the Lakeville Journal.